Welcome, everyone. This is Games Over Plastic, episode number 15. As always, I am Midnight, back again, and I am joined by the two most amazing hosts in the industry with me here. We have the man, the myth, the legend, the master platinum trophy hunter. He's getting his title back. We'll hear why later. Um, And the man who's still enjoying his summer, Sean Mason. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Yeah, at the time of you, uh, you guys are listening to this. It will be exactly two weeks uh, until I return to school for the first day. So, uh, yeah, summer's flown by, and um, oh, I'm gonna miss it. But I'm ready to get back. Actually, I start the week before because uh, soccer tryouts and all that start. So, are we'll you see though? Uh, a little bit, but you know, all good things must come to an end. It seems like it went by fast, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Like it goes, even for it me, I I haven't been off, but it still seems like it went quick. Yeah, it goes by quick, but I'm I'm excited to start getting uh getting paychecks again. Oh, you don't get paid in the summer, huh? No, that's tough. All right. Well, we're happy to have you here as always. And last but not least, we have the Ginger Ninja. <laughs> I don't know why I just said that. The man with the buckies in the background. He just left the gym. He's been feeling sick, but he's starting to feel better. I hope. I don't know. He's got a lot going on. Hodge, how you doing, sir? I'm good. Yeah, I was um I was I'm still like not at a hundred, but I wanted to go to the gym just to see if I could do like a light workout. And I didn't get any lightheadedness while I was there, so that's good. So I'm on the mend, which is good because not being able to work these last or like very briefly working these last few weeks has been very bad on the paycheck or the the you know, the bank account. So it's nice that I can hopefully get back to working full time, make some cash money again. But yeah. um, I thought I have actually a friend who is a teacher and they gave them the option to where they can just make more during the school year or kind of slightly less and have it get paid over the summer. And he always. Yeah. Did so the way that the way that we do it is you can get more money per paycheck or you can get a lump sum paycheck in June. But then it's like it's basically like getting like four or five paychecks all at once. And like um, that, that's that's what I that's what I took. And that's good. But then you realize you're like, oh, I have all this money. Yeah. yeah. And then you're like, yeah. oh, by the end of the summer, you're like, oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> now, calm yeah. down. You got to stop those gambling habits, Sean. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You've been winning money, though. Huh? I saw you won some money yeah. the other day. I did. Yeah. But I got I got to take a little bit of a break. Uh, I got got a little reprimanded the other day. <laughs> too many, too many house. high state, too many high stakes bets. I only I only post the high stakes ones, the the, the pie in the sky ones, those those like uh, little ones that I do that I I do here now and then. Yeah, I don't post those. I go excited. on. Oh, go ahead. I'm su- oh, I'm I'm just gonna say I'm I'm superstitious, so I never post my bet until I until it's over because if I post it, I know it's not gonna hit. I I, Dude, I can't. You should have seen me the other day. I was like sweating. It's like it's like watching like a regular season game. It's like Game Seven of the World Series over here. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I I go on underdog every now and then. I do those things where you pick like two things. And if they're both true, you win money. And I've I've never hit on one of them. Uh, The last one I did, it was 10 bucks. Um, They gave me another one of those where uh, like Angel Reese just had to score one point. So that's a free. That's a give me. And then, of course, I pick like Rafael Devers to hit a home run or something. These baseball players always screw me over. It's always baseball. And never do the home run. Never do. Never bet the home run. Never bet the home run ball. Unless it's if, my judge. If, if that loser would have hit a home run, I would have made seventy. Oh, that loser is the second best third baseman in baseball right now. All right. Well, he didn't hit a home run though, so I'm mad. Second best uh, third baseman in baseball. Well, tell him to hit a home run for me, Sean. All right. All right. I'm gonna call I him. Up right. Actually, I'll walk. I'll walk down to his house because I'm sure he lives around here. There you go. <laughs> All right, guys. So welcome, everybody, to the podcast. This is Games Over Plastic, the podcast for the agnostic gamers. No console wars, just fun. In this episode, this is going to be fun. So last week, we did the game of the year. We picked our game of the years from 2010 to 2019. And in this episode, we're going to do the previous decade. So we're going to mix it up. We're going to start at 2009, and we're going to go back to 2000 we're each going to pick the best game of the year in our opinion and it's going to be a lot of fun but uh some administrative stuff as always you can find the podcast on all audio podcast services spotify apple music overcast pocket cast every cast check us out if you're listening to the audio version and you want to see the video version look in the description there's always a link to go to the youtube video version this video 
version is available on YouTube at youtube.com slash at games over plastic. Just search for games over plastic. You'll find it. And we have cameras and we have amazing graphics designed by Hodge. It's a lot of fun. Like it, it updates live. Like you'll see when we're picking our games, there's going to be like a cool little graphical spread where the game art will appear. It's fun. Join us. And when you're over there, leave us a like, leave us a comment, leave us a, a subscription. We appreciate you. So that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and get started with our only write-in that we got from last week. We'll start there. As I as we mentioned before, we are doing write-ins now occasionally. So if you have something that you want to uh, to have on the show potentially, leave it in the comments on YouTube. That's how we do it. Go on there, write us a question. If we like it, or if it's the only question, Astro, uh, we may use your question. This week, we have a kind of a, th a throwback question from our Defining Duke brethren. Shout out to Cog, who was on the show recently. Um, Astro Parrot King, our friend. You went to the baseball game with him, Sean, right? Yeah, and I went with Cog, too. Yeah. yeah. Cog was there, too. Yeah. And Sav, yep. Yeah. Um, Astro tradition. Parrot King, he writes in, and he says, Food. Food is very important. Do you all eat mac and cheese with a spoon or a fork? Do you like it creamy or baked? Now, for people who don't know, this is a famous question from Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast, which we're big fans of. We love them. Um, this was a big debate that they had, and apparently Astro wants us to know our take on this. Now, we're not the Dukes, but we do eat some food around here, so we will weigh in. Uh, Sean Mason, what do you think about mac and cheese, sir? All right, so uh, I know this is not a popular opinion, um, and a lot of people already know this who listen to the show. But I only eat cheese on pizza. Like I don't, I'm not a big cheese. I'm not a cheese fan. Never have been. So uh, I've eaten mac and cheese probably once in my life, and that was like when I was younger. And I don't, I don't, I probably ate it with a fork. I don't know. Um, I do make mac and cheese for like I, I can make it. I, I usually bake it in the oven. Um, Makes it in the baker. Yeah, but. I don't know. I don't like I said, I only eat cheese on pizza. That's it, though. Like, I don't eat cheese on anything else. So. OK, I eat well, cheese by the block. No, I'm kidding. I, <laughs> I love it. I mean, cheese by the block is good. Cheese is just good in general. You could literally just eat some cheese. Disgusting. But uh, I love cheese. Like, you don't like a good cheeseburger? No, nah, I, I just have a regular burger. I don't I, I, I don't something about cheese. I just don't like cheese. I like it on pizza. And that's like the closest I'll get. But I need to be right. in the mood for it. like I need to be in the mood for it, you know? Mm hmm. Fair enough. Like when fair I get enough. like if I have chicken parm, it's chicken parm, no cheese. There's breaded chicken. What? Yeah, breaded chicken with sauce. That's disgusting. Okay. Uh, uh, really? Uh, you never had it? Really? You you would have it. You wouldn't even know. Um I, the cheese is just so delicious on the chicken parm. I feel like that's an integral part to it. I love that. How the cheese melts, especially it gets a little bit well done. You get a little bit of burn and crisp on the top. It's delicious. But to each their own, Sean, to each their own. It might be I'm sure it's good without the cheese. I just it's think the cheese excellent. adds something. chicken tender with sauce. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, fair enough. What about you, Hodge? What's your uh, mac and cheese takes? Anything? I hate you for choosing this question because I don't. I don't care. It was the only but question we got. I eat. I eat <laughs> mac and cheese with. I get it if I go to a restaurant. It's one of the sides, and I eat it with whatever the fuck they give me. I don't. Uses a straw. <laughs> he sucks up the cheese with a straw. It's usually Jeez. a. We've... It's usually a plastic spork. I don't know. <laughs> okay he <laughs> uses a spork there you go all right no and i don't care Cle creamy i don't care it all tastes good i like cheese so i'm not like sean but i don't I, I eat the mac and cheese that's provided to me i don't I don't make mac and cheese ever it's always if i go to a barbecue joint and it's a side that's pretty much the only time yeah. i eat it so yeah it's whatever's provided i don't care <laughs> I I like, that. as you can tell by looking at me i like food so i don't i don't i'm not very picky me too. <laughs> I enjoy some food too. <laughs> yeah. All right. So for me, and again, this was our only question. Um, audience, please leave, one, leave us some questions. Not. I didn't. Maybe I missed it. But Astro, to answer your question, mac and cheese, spoon or a fork, it doesn't matter, dude. I'll literally use whatever I have available that's clean. Because, uh, you know, sometimes when I haven't done the dishes for a little while, you start to run out of forks. or You know, then you have to grab a spoon. Then you got to run the dishwasher. So... I'll just get, it literally doesn't matter. You can eat mac and cheese with a spoon or a fork and it's not going to hinder you in any way. You know what I mean? Um, and then is creamy or baked? Uh, I think baked is probably better. I do like it when you got kind of like the hardened cheese on the top, but you do want it to be a little creamy underneath though. I'm sure Sean, I bet Sean, 
being the master baker that he is, the spreads yeah, he makes on, I bet he makes some good ass mac and cheese. Yeah, I, I bake it in the oven. It's creamy on the bottom, little little uh, rough on top. I use breadcrumbs on top too. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, I like you know, yeah. how Sean makes it. That's what I want. Yeah, it's that's so the way my dad always made it, and so he taught me how to make it. So my favorite cheese dish is one my aunt, rest in peace, used to make. Was, we just called it cheesy taters. It's basic. It was like hash brown with cheese and like crust cheese stuff on yeah. it. You bake yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's that stuff was crack. And yeah, she made it. She used to always make it. It was like always the side dish everyone went for. <laughs> she started making like two dishes per meal and stuff after that. So yeah, rest rest in peace, Aunt Jan. But yeah, she made some amazing cheesy potato dish and it was awesome rest in peace all right well let's go ahead and segue boys that was a fun little side topic if you will thank you guys write in more questions we appreciate you let's go ahead and get into what we are playing and let's go ahead and start with sean mason because i see he's got a whole plethora of awesome stuff to talk about and i can't wait to hear I'll sean. see you guys in 45 minutes yeah. <laughs> let's hear it sean <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start off just going to mention real quick that I got the Platinum Trophy in uh, Trails Through Daybreak, which I had already talked about extensively. Amazing game, like unbelievable, like going to be right there with Rebirth as my game of the year. Haven't decided yet. I Platinum to Toy Story 2, a great throwback platformer. I talked about that a little bit. I, you know, it's such an easy game to just, you know, throw a podcast on and play. Like there's no, there's no like, you, you do unlock cutscenes from, like, the movie. Like, you can watch, like, scenes from... But I've seen Toy Story 2 a million <laughs> times, so, like, I don't really need to watch it again. Um, and I played this other game called Mystic Pillars. Now, this is a game that came out in 2020 on Steam, but it was released in 2024, a couple months ago, for uh, PS5. I'm not sure if it's on... I think it's on Switch as well, and it might be on Xbox. I'm not sure. But it's a puzzle game, and I'm going to tell you right now, this puzzle game starts off very easy. Very easy. And then it gradually just gets more difficult and difficult. I flew through the first... four. There's 100 levels. Flew through Mm -hmm. the first 14. Like, this is easy. Get to 15. I'm sitting there for about 10 minutes. I'm like, all right. I'm an idiot. I don't know what to do. And then, you know, you, you eventually, you know, you put it down, you come back and you figure it out your first try and you're like, let's go. Um, and I just gradually worked my way through it. It took me about seven or eight hours to play through the whole game. I didn't I didn't look up one solution to a puzzle, um, which is good. I highly suggest that because if you like, I don't know, if you're playing a puzzle game, there's like, what's the point of like playing if you're going to look up the answers? Like, there's yeah, really it's, no point. it's like. I only I do it if of... I'm like if I'm stuck on it for like an hour. I'm not gonna just sit there and add hours to my game. But if it's like sitting there, I'm gonna try and do it. But there, like you, it reminds me of the game The Witness. There was a couple puzzles I did look up because I was so stuck because that's a really tough. I love I love The Witness. It was it was a oh, great, it's a great game. game. Yeah, I feel like. Um, I feel like if you're playing a game where there is just a puzzle as like a little side element, it's not the core focus of the game Mm -hmm. and you're getting annoyed and you're struggling and you just want to continue the quest or the story, looking it up is fine. But if you're playing a game where the the whole point of the game is puzzles, then why are you looking it up? Don't even play the game if you're going to just look it up. You know, This this is like the entire game is just puzzles. There's a little story to it. It's just about like you're this traveler and you come across this like ancient Egyptian village and you're just trying to uncover like the past of like what happened there and you run into people. But like, it's honestly, it's just a puzzle game. It is a lot of fun. I did get the platinum trophy for my second playthrough, which is you have to beat the game with only using, only basically failing 50 times, 50 times or fewer, which wow. I failed like a million times my first time. Uh, I used a guide for the second time just because I just wanted to get through it. And it took me like, I don't know, 45 minutes. I just followed the YouTube video watching it. Uh, shout out to PlayStation Trophies. Those guys are awesome. Um, Not shout out to PlayStation Stars, by the way. Did you guys get that damn email? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I mean, it's... I don't know. Email, but I didn't. I don't care. I don't want to have to <laughs> log in and do crap. You know what I mean? Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I got, the platinum. I got the Platinum in that. It was great. Really good puzzle game. Again, if you're going to play it, I highly suggest playing it without a guide. Like That's the best way to do it. Um, yeah. Really good game. And then I also played another game called Call of Duty World War II. Uh, I was, you know, I came back from, um, you know, Pearl Harbor from ha- um, Hawaii. And I said, you know what? I'm in, a, I'm in a little bit of a World War II mood. So I decided to boot up Call of Duty 
World War II, which I had never played before, ever. And I decided to play through the campaign on Veteran. Um, beat it on Veteran. Got my butt kicked a lot. I'm like, wow. But you can, like, slowly feel yourself getting better. And it's great. Because you're like, you're like, oh, you start out and you're, like, dead in, like, two shots. And you're like, oh, what am I going to do? No way I'm going to get past this. And then you kind of, like, you figure out, like, little spots to go to. And like, I got to pick off this guy. I got to pick off that guy. I got to pick off this guy. And then you gradually, you know, make your way up. And I really liked it. I thought the level design was awesome. I thought the story was really good. You know, int- uh, intriguing characters. You have, like, you have like, a little party of five. You're basically following around the whole time. Um, and one of them ends up getting captured and you end up having to try to like rescue them but it's pretty cool it's world war ii but it takes place mostly it's like 1944 1945 so like the end of the war there's like a level where you infiltrate like a german like um base is like this french woman and uh like you're undercover it was it was awesome like you're going through and you're just trying to like figure out you're trying to find a certain guy so you have like a code message you have to say and when you say the code message they'll either respond and be like oh yeah i know like they'll you know they'll give you a response they'll be like what are you talking about you're suspicious. And they have that German accent, so it's like pretty funny. Uh, but I really like the game. It was fun. I played through it on Veteran. Like I said, I got all the collectibles. I even dove into the multiplayer because there's a couple multiplayer trophies. I grabbed them. So the only trophies I have left are the Nazi Zombies trophies. I'm going to tell Wait, you right are now. Are you going to get the platinum? Oh, I'm going to try. These are ridiculous, though. Like, <laughs> insane. Like, the stuff you have to do for the Zombies platinum. And like I paired up with some guy online, and me and him were trying to do it, and we just we, we like we we got really close. We couldn't do it, so I have like six trophies left, and it's all Nazi zombies related. So I'm like pretty stoked for it. I was like I was getting good. I was in the first person. I'm like, what is this first person shooter, Sean? Whoa, very different than the JRPGs <laughs> I'm usually playing. Um, it's yeah. Um, it was a lot of fun though. Uh, I'm en- I, I enjoyed it. Um, like I said, I'm still gonna go back to it. Zombies is really fun. Like I've only played it a couple times before this, and wow, it is it is a blast. Getting that mystery box and trying to figure out what weapon you're gonna get, and then you get a bad weapon. You're like, no, what a waste of points. Um, but yeah, yeah. did you guys ever play World War II? Uh, I skipped that one. I was burnt oh. out on Call of Duty at the time, and I wasn't hearing great things about the multiplayer, and I just kind of skipped it. I might have played it like for an hour or two. Um, but nothing crazy now. Yeah, I'd fallen off of Call of Duty by then, so I didn't. I didn't care. And it was. I heard it. Was, that's like the first one I think from Sledgehammer. And no I just. Idea. I, uh-huh. I have no idea. It oh, is from yeah. Sledgehammer. It's not their first one. Though. Oh yeah, their first one wasn't an advanced, advanced War, warfare. Advanced warfare. Yep. Yeah. Jetpacks. Yeah. By by that point, I remember I was debating getting it because they finally went back from the advanced warfare, infinite warfare, like futuristic crap, and I was excited to go back to World War II, but. When it came out, I just I couldn't be bothered, <laughs> so I never played. I it. love it. I absolutely love. It. I thought the campaign was great. I'm like, I don't know why people complain about these games. You know, the when it's added to Game Pass, I'll probably jump in it because I know all the Call of Duties will eventually make their way to Game Pass. So at that point, I probably will. Well, I suggest the campaign. It was, it was a good time, and Veteran was fun. And like, I got it got me into like a shooter mood. I'm like, oh, this is mm-hmm. good. So I got I got that, and then um, I also played through Super Mario World. Because I've been in my little Mario kick. Um, and this game's just amazing. I don't, I don't know if there's much Mario. more I can say. Yeah, I don't think there's much more I can say about how good this game is. Um, I've played through it a million times. But I booted up the Switch. Did it on the Nintendo Online you know, Expansion Pass. Played through it. Just an amazing game. Um, my favorite 2D Mario game of all time. World designs. Oh. Like, untouched. Best plot. Feels so good to play. Three's my like favorite. Three? Yeah, no, I mean, that's fine. I mean, three Classic. and World are both great. Yeah. Uh, I just think World is just... It took everything Three did, and I think it just made it... I think it just did everything better. Like the, it, the World map is just so cool. I remember looking at the World map as a kid and just staring at it and being like, God, this looks so cool. Like, I just want to explore this whole land. And it's just so cool. Um, but yeah, I love the cape power-up. is one of my favorite power-ups of all time in Mario. Mm-hmm. Just running with the cape and going straight up a wall or flying, getting like... Get, making the cape go like um like you're floating through the air just hovering i love it so yeah super mario world also introduced um one of the first i mean there was yoshi was introduced before but it was like the first real game where yoshi was like a 2d platformer so and i love yoshi so yeah great. yoshi <laughs> was introduced i think in the super nintendo one right land or whatever. no that is land super nintendo world? super mario world no yoshi's oh, that's cookie when you were playing. Was, okay yeah yoshi's cookie was the first yoshi game 
Okay, uh, sorry, it's hard to keep track like a, of all these Mario's. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's like a pu- Yoshi's Cookie is like a puzzle game. It's a really bad puzzle game. Galaxy yeah, is 3D, right? Yes, yeah. Galaxy one. That, that was 2007. Yeah, I know everyone loves that one. That was Wii. Yeah, it's my least favorite 3D Mario. Really? Yeah. Okay. Too I know a lot of people love that much one. Waggle. 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 <laughs> Yeah, they're all, right, all about those motion controls. <laughs> yeah. All right, Sean, I'm excited to hear you talk about another game when you're ready. Um, all right, no, I am ready unless you guys want to make some comments on Super Mario World, the greatest 2D Mario game of all time. I mean, I, I remember just... I played that with my aunt uh, back in the day. I used to go over to my aunt's and she would babysit me and we would play that. We'd like, hand the controller like an back aunt? and forth. Like, like a little aunt? No, yes. my as in like my brother, my father's sister. I, I know. Yeah. A bug's life is based uh, on his life. Yeah. <clears throat> Grounded, the video game. Shout out Obsidian. Um, yeah, no, we used speaking to of Obsidian, the controller back and forth. Yes, yeah, speaking Take, of Obsidian. Well, Hodge, first <laughs> of all, Mario, anything? No, you're fine. Move on. Way to ruin the segue. That's great. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, I was playing. I decided you guys, we, we had talked about it before in previous episodes, but I just decided to boot up South Park Stick of Truth. As someone who's never seen South Park, this is a very interesting game. Like, um... <laughs> The humor is interesting. A lot of fart jokes, like mm-hmm. the whole magic system's all farts. Which, mm-hmm. um, okay, so I'm gonna say this: there are some audio issues I'm noticing with the game too. Like characters will come in during a cutscene, and you'll I have the I have the subtitles on, and they won't say the first word of the subtitle. Like it'll say like "hello," my, and it'll, it'll just start like right away. And you can see them mouthing it, but it, the audio doesn't come out. I just mm-hmm. noticed that. Um, this is, I'm going to start off with a, a couple negatives I have. That's it. The audio <laughs> and then the turn-based combat. It's it's good. Not really um, responsive to buttons. Like sometimes the buttons are not as responsive as like other turn-based games. Like I'm like I'm used to. It's it's a little laggy. The mm-hmm. turn-based like the button prompts. But again, I I don't think you're playing this for the turn-based combat. You're playing it for like the writing and the humor. Mm-hmm. Uh, but other than that, those are like my, my two only like gripes with it. So so far, I'm at the end of the game. I know I am just from like my trophy progression. I I just finished the can- the Canada part. First of all, what's up with the Canadian people? It's like an eight bit world, and why are they all like? <laughs> why are they like? Why are they like? Why do they look so like horribly animated compared to everyone else? I wasn't gonna okay. spoil that part because getting to Canada is the funniest part of the entire game. But uh, since you said it, it's because Canada is it's a backwards ass co- country that hasn't come to the 21st century yet, which is why it's like old school eight okay. eight bit game. I did. I, just, I, I walked in there and I'm like, what is it? It's like an eight. It's, I'm like, like, am I playing like Final Fantasy one with the, the map and you're walking around? And you go up to the port and you go in the little boat and fro- float across um, <laughs> South Park. South, yeah, Park, I was... South Park's always making fun of Canada, and it's so uh-huh. funny. And I think I remember in that game, don't you pull up to the wall, and the dude's yelling at you from the wall, like, hey, guy, you can't come in here, buddy. That's yeah, you need like a that. passport. You need a passport. So I, I went over there, because I explored the whole map first, and I got up there, and, like, you need a passport. So, like, I was trying, like, for a while, trying to get a passport, and then I'm like, there's no way, like, it's, pr- it's definitely part of the main story. So mm-hmm. then I just stopped doing that. But, yeah, I just finished the Canada part. Um, Actually, I'm actually past that. I just infiltrated... Um, I went inside. I think his name's Mr. Slave. Is that his name? Like, I went inside of him. Yeah, that's like, uh, you're, you're trying to, like, perform an abortion on him, but it's like, you're trying to get, like, a probe out of him. The whole thing is, like, bizarre. I did get a trophy for summoning Mr. Slave inside Mr. Slave, though, which is oh, kind nice. of funny. Um, yeah. Some of the summons are, like, like, you can summon, like, a literal piece of poop. Mr. Hanky? Like, Mr. Hanky. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's just okay. That whole side quest is weird. You have to find his kids. Yeah, the humor is just like, like as someone who's never watched it before. I'm like, I see all these different characters. I'm like, these are definitely making references to episodes. They have to be. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lobster I saved. I saved some lobster by like I farted and blew up like a boulder, and there was like a lobster, and yeah, like I saved him. He gave me lobster armor. Yeah, and I got a trophy for siding with a lobster. The for, crab like, people. Yeah, the crab. I don't know. Maybe it's crab. I don't really know. <laughs> But uh, I am enjoying it. The writing is, there are parts that I am laughing. Other parts, I'm like, yeah, that's not really that funny. But I can see why <laughs> people would like it. Um, as far as characters go, not a bit, I don't like Cartman. Cartman's not my not my fan. I like Kyle better. I, I'm a, I'm a, I like Kyle. I did side with the elves. I sided with the elves at that one point you can choose. Nice. It really doesn't matter which side you pick, but I sided with the elves. Yeah. I like using Kyle. I like using Stan in combat. Stan's pretty cool. With his blade, he can like slash and hit multiple enemies. Um, 
overall, it's a good game. I like how you can you can dress up your character and like it affects like all your different stats. Like a very typical RPG, but like they're all like very unique. Like you have, like the CIA armor. Oh, uh, oh yeah, you have to infiltrate a fake Taco Bell. That was pretty funny too. Oh, and it is so 2014. Like you're making Facebook friends and like the elves are talking about Twitter and the humans are talking about face. It's just like like this is so it's such a piece of like it's, it just takes me back to that time period um overall the map design's awesome like i love running around south park and just like running around all the different areas it's like a side scroll it's like you're side scrolling but you can go up and down too mm-hmm. it reminds me of like paper mario like the way you explore that um i like just going around and rummaging through um like all like the different drawers and trying to find like different things i've done every side quest so far i'm collecting the little pokemon like creatures too Jim pokemon yeah yeah Jim pokemon um I already know I missed one though. Like I missed a collect a collectible one because I did look up because I was like, how many? Like I'm like I'm close to the end of the game and I'm missing like two of them. And there was one in, in an area where like with like you get abducted by aliens at some point and you, you can't go back oh, to there. But I missed one there. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, so I'm gonna have to redo that. But it doesn't matter. Oh, hate, oh what's up with missiles. Kenny? What's up with Kenny? What do you mean? What about Kenny? Isn't, he doesn't. He doesn't speak. He just. Oh yeah, because he wears a he wears a jacket that muffles his voice, so you can't understand what he's saying. Okay, and what's up with his family? They're, they're poor. Really poor. <laughs> yeah, they're more than poor. They're just white yeah. trash. Yeah, they're poor. Yeah, they're yeah the white that was trash interesting. Oh, family. and then you had you know you had the black kid. They called him Token. Yep, like, token. What's up with that? That is not. Dude, that's South not Park right. is out of pocket. Dude. That's not his right. Name, his name. It's they changed his name, but his name at the start of the show was Token Black because he was the Token Black kid. That's why his name is Token. <laughs> okay. But then All later right. on in South Park, like a season or two ago, they they changed it to that he's actually named after J.R. or Tolkien. So his name is actually Tolkien. Oh, that's awesome. Not, not Token. Yeah. There you go. But okay. yeah. One thing got... about South Park is that they there's no prisoners. They make fun of everybody yeah. equally. There's no, oh, it's not political in any way. They make fun of the right. They make fun of the left. They make it fun of all the celebrities mm-hmm. and it's just savage. And it's hilarious. Yeah. I killed Al Gore. <laughs> yeah. Cause he's looking for yeah. man bear pig. <laughs> yeah. Man bear pig. You, then, you, then he dresses up as him and then you, you fight him and kill him. Yeah. That was interesting. Um, yeah. The whole thing is really, I'm like, as someone who's, like I said, as someone who's never seen South Park, it is such an interesting <laughs> experience. I'm like, it's good. I and I, I do like the characters. They are interesting. You know, it's made me kind of intrigued to kind of want to boot up an episode of South Park and just watch. Dude, it's it. a good show. It's if funny. you have to, if you have to watch any episode, watch the Chin Pokemon episode from season three. It is one of the funniest episodes of television I've ever seen in my life. It just makes fun of how ridiculous Pokemon is, and it's hysterical. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll watch that. Yeah, it's it's a good show. Um, yeah. If you really get into this, there is a sequel you could play later. Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, I think I will. Hole. I think I will play the sequel. I think I will. Uh, I like I said, I am enjoying it. It is fun, and um, it's like a cozy art. Not a, I don't know. How, it's like a cozy RPG, but like it is. It's fun. It's, it's not it's meant a good to be time. difficult. No, I'm playing on the hardest difficulty, and it's not difficult at all. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I like that. Like I said, Kyle's pretty cool. Like I don't like Cartman. I like Stan. I You're like not Butters. Too. Like part, man. He's the he's the he's the, yeah, he's the he's fun. He's friend. the comic relief and evil guy. Mm-hmm. I like Butters. Butters is kind of cool. Butters is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, uh, the parents are pretty funny in the game too. Oh, Randy! Yeah. Randy All the parents dead. like they're they're pretty funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so South Park: Secret Truth. Uh, I'm I'm really enjoying it. So I'm glad I am playing it. Yeah, yeah. Hilarious game. Um, Hodge. Hodge, any thoughts on South Park? Oh, it's one of my favorite like RPGs of all time. I was crying last, like especially when you get to Canada and it turns eight bit. I was in I, tears. That blew my mind. So like I could not. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> at first, when you first meet the guy at the border, I'm like, why is he like? Why does he look like so different? And then I realized there's a kid they call Maple Leaf, or they call something like Maple Leaf Kid or something, and he's just like the Canadian people. Like he's animated the same way, even though he lives in America. Yeah, their heads their heads split in half, and they talk yeah. like that. Yeah, that's, that's isn't um is it Stan's well, Kyle, brother or Kyle's Kyle, brother? Kyle's brother Ike? He's a d- adopted. He's Canadian. Oh, that's okay. So Ike is his brother. Okay, Ike. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'm so like... arguably, in my opinion, arguably Obsidian's best game, The Stick of Truth. It's up there with Fallout New Vegas. It's it's an awesome game hilarious story um the fractured butthole is not made by obsidian it's made by another studio it's not i don't think it's as good instead of doing like a medieval fantasy take 
Um, it's more like superheroes. Yeah. Um, and instead of like traditional turn based, they kind of do like a Mario versus rabbits kind of like tactical. Okay. Um, well, but it is still good it out, yeah. and it's still funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's yeah, it's still good. I, I preferred the turn base to it, but there are people who prefer that like XCOM or whatever type gameplay. And so if you like that, you'll enjoy it. But the first one that I do enjoy more because of the RPG part. And I, I prefer kind of their fantasy jokes over the because at that point it was already oversaturated in the Marvel universe. So it's just like I don't need another yeah. superhero game. And so at the time, but it is still and the and the uh, the title's hilarious, the fractured butthole. <laughs> and it, you might enjoy the humor a little more because you'll just be more familiar with the characters by the time you get to the second game yeah some of the stuff will be I, repeat last thing i'm gonna say i do like the overworld music when you're walking around it's like rah, rah, huh, huh. i don't know i just like it it's fun it's <laughs> yeah, good it's really enjoying it glad i glad i glad i decided to play it it's my second favorite south park game of all time behind uh, south park chef's love shack from playstation one and n64 wow i never played that one Oh, it's like it's basically Mario Party, but South Park. It's it's hysterical. Rest in peace. It's, it's crap. They kind of wrote him off. Yeah, yeah. It's crap now because obviously it's an old game and it you know it aged like milk. But at the time, especially when I was like nine years old and I wasn't supposed to be watching South Park, me and my friends would play it all the time and we were always dying laughing at it. And we thought it was so cool because we had a rated M video game. <laughs> All right, so Whoa. there we go, Sean. Are you satisfied with your? Wonder I am. Plan? I am. That's a good list. South Park, The Stick of Truth, Call of Duty, World War Two, Super Mario World, and you got three platinums: Weebery, Daybreak, Toy Story Two, and Mystic Pillars. Good job, Sean. Are you going to platinum South Park? Yeah, I am. Yeah, definitely. Nice. Yeah. That so that one collectible that you missed isn't going to screw you. I'll I'll go back. I'll just I'll replay it because I have to replay it again anyway to get the platinum because there's like certain stuff like you have to you have to beat certain bosses like equipped with like certain um like like skins or whatever mm. I guess that's what you call it or oh, damn. and um I didn't know that at the time so the next time I'll, I'm gonna play through it I'll make multiple save files and just do that but yeah it's it's good there you go all right so let me go ahead and get into what I'm playing real quick it will be short. And then we'll hand it off to Hodge. So what I'm playing, there's two games. First of all, I'm just going to briefly mention College Football 25. Shout out to this game. I dropped it. I uninstalled it from my from my Xbox. Um, I think it is a good game, but it's just uh, it's too sweaty for me. I was playing online. I think I'm kind of trash. First of all, I'm not very good. Uh, I haven't played a football game really since Madden 16. So it's been a long time. Um, and it's just like when I try to play online, I was doing really good. Like I was winning. I won like seven games in a row. And then I think they promoted me up a tier. And then I just started getting my ass kicked. And I'm playing like all these sweats who obviously have like some kind of ebook and like strategy. And they're like exploiting uh, the dumb AI. And I was just like, man, I'm not really enjoying this. And I have too many other games to get to. Um, like the next game I'm about to talk to. So I ended up just uninstalling college football. It's a good game. I'm not going to hate on it. I mean, the presentation, the graphics, all the stuff is good. It's just I wanted to focus on my single player stuff. So that's college football 25. Then we have the adventures of Geralt, the Witcher three. That's what I'm playing. I mentioned this, I think before I love this game so far. I'm pretty I don't know how far I am. Uh, I'm like level 17 or 18. No, I'm level 19. Excuse me. I'm level 19. Uh, I'm in the second zone. I'm in the city of Novigrad. I've been doing all kinds of stuff. Um, I finally got to hook up with Triss. Triss is awesome. I love her. She's a great character. Very good looking too. Uh, the combat is so fun. I thought the combat sucked at first, but it turned out I sucked. I just had to get like some better weapons and equipment and get better. Because um, now I'm having a lot of fun with the dodge and the parry and dismembering people and then using your signs uh, smartly, applying the oils correctly, like depending on who you're fighting. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just an awesome game, an awesome world, some great story. You get to make choices. Um, I'm having a great time. I'm definitely not going to drop it this time. Even if I didn't have a bet, I still wouldn't drop it this time. It's got me hooked. Finally. Um, this game is fantastic. I can see why it was a lot of people's game of the year for 2015. I think it's going to be my game of the year for 2015 when I'm, when it all is said and done. Um, but I'm going to beat this game. I'm going to beat both the DLCs, too. There's Blood and Wine, which everybody says is amazing. And then there's uh, the other one, whatever it is, the blue one, I like Song or something. I don't remember. I just know the banner was blue. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm playing. 
College Football 25 got uninstalled, but it's okay. And The Witcher 3 is absolutely incredible. Cool. All right. If you guys have any thoughts, I don't think so. Probably not. We've been over it. But Hodge, you're up next. Uh, okay. Yeah. I w- uh, really quickly with yours. Yeah. I'm still not going to play Witcher 3. But uh, with college football, I, yeah, I haven't gone back to it. So I understand that feeling. But it, college football is back as of today when we're recording. So hell yeah. For everyone who's excited about that, I'm still waiting two weeks for the NFL to start. But waiting um, on both. But excited yeah. About both. Uh, yeah, but my games, uh, I'll start just really quickly. Uh, Fortnite has a new season. I played a couple rounds of it. It's fucking terrible. It's just the entire season. It's literally just Marvel is the season this this time. Like it used to be uh, like for a while, it was like there'd be one IP that they'd like add to the battle pass or something where it's just, you know, like one season, the this this special skin was uh, Geralt or Geralt or Geralt or however you say his name. Um, and so like, that was kind of cool. It's like you work up to get that, but they still have their own skins. And now it's, it's just straight up. Everything is Marvel. I'm like, you've lost your identity. You're just a Marvel game now. Like Disney bought your soul basically for this season. And then they add a bunch of fucking superpowers to your arsenal, which makes everything OP and the guns basically become worthless at that point. So it's just, it's bad. It's a terrible season. And it, it coming off of an already mediocre season of having the cars that you turn into basically twisted metal cars. And it's just like, all right, Fortnite is just kind of losing its identity now. Cause like the thing I loved about it was back in the day, there was a superhero season, but like the Island turned into basically everything was like a uh, movie set. So it was like, you know, they're shooting movies and they had their own superhero skins in the battle pass and everything. And it was really cool because it was its own thing. It was a Fortnite superhero season, but now it's just Marvel. And it's like, all right, you've given up on trying to do your own thing and you're just letting IPs come in and sell your game basically. And so it's just kind of, I'm just kind of over it. So until maybe next season will be good. But as of right now, I'm just done with Fortnite. I can't, I'm not doing this stupid superpower bullshit, but, uh, Anyway, uh, moving on. I'm still playing Metroid Prime. I haven't beaten it yet. I just got the ice cannon, so I'm like two-thirds of the way through or something, maybe three-quarters. I can't remember. I've been a little busy, so I haven't played too much of it, but it is still a great game. I'm enjoying it. Uh, It's definitely one that I understand why people are so passionate about 4 coming out soon because it definitely does seem like... I mean, it's it's not as good of a first-person shooter as others, but... It's a first-person shooter of Metroidvania, so it's kind of really cool, you know, kind of see a doorway you can't go through, you're in the power, and you come back to it later. And so it's it's a it's a really fun game, and I'm enjoying it. But uh, that's really all I have to say about that. But and then since Black Ops Six is coming out soon, uh, and Modern Warfare Three was added to Battle uh, Game Game Pass, I started playing Modern Warfare Three online just to kind of get back into the call of duty mode and i'm enjoying the hell out of this game for the most part there are some stupid things they added like there are boots that basically make you silent and fast so people are just sprinting around and they just added a spear as a weapon to the game so people are just sprinting around silently stabbing people with spears i'm like this isn't call of duty i can't stand this crap and there's all this you know the sweats who are always constantly drop shotting and stuff it's just like i just miss old call of duty when it was pretty simple the gameplay was simple the battle path or uh like uh the on, like I, I actually hopped into cod 4 i didn't add it on here just for like a day and it was so funny because to upgrade your guns it was headshots kills that's all that's all you did you got your camos from doing headshots and kills and that was it so uh so i mean i'm enjoying it and i'm i'm probably gonna fall off it especially after seeing some of that gameplay of black ops 6 of how sweaty that uh omni movement is i'm just like i'm not gonna enjoy this (laughs) but i'm just but i'm just playing it actually yesterday even though i'm not very good i was at the top of the leaderboard in every single game yesterday so i was like okay maybe i'm okay at this game but but yeah it's a yeah, it's it's fine. It's Call of Duty. It's the same old, same old. But I wish it. I wish they go back to the very simplistic ways of Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare Two because that those games were just perfect first person shooters. They were so good. But yeah, yeah, Black Ops oh, One. Yeah, and Black Ops. Yeah, that just the golden age of Call of Duty. It was so good in the late two thousands, early twenty tens. That that era of Call of Duties will never be topped. But. I don't know. Maybe Black Ops 6 will be fun. We'll find out in uh, about a week when the beta goes live. But yeah, that's all I'm playing, really, pretty much. Okay. 
Right on. So that concludes what we are playing. A great many great games, a great discussion. Let's go ahead and segue into our main topic of discussion. As I mentioned before, leave a like, by the way. Subscribe if you're listening. Shameless plug. I got to do it. Got to do it. Um, Game of the year, 2009 to 2000. We're going to go Midnight Hodge. Sean is going to be the order by random draw. Um, And we're going to go ahead and get it started. I guess with me. 2009. You guys ready to do this? Oh, really yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be a shocker for you guys. You guys never would have seen this game coming. 2009 for Midnight. A little game from a small studio called BioWare. And that game is Dragon Age Origins. Of course. I love it. Dragon Age Origins is one of my favorite games of all time. Not just 2009 when we did our overall list. Uh, it was in my top three, top four. I forget. Um, I love that game. The RPG elements in that game are peak. The story is incredible. You get, like I said before, you get to choose like eight different origin stories. You play like a little hour long segment where you get to see where you're coming up and make some choices. And then that story defines like how people interact with you and react to you in the world. Um, we're not going to go super in depth with these because we have a lot of games to go on. So I'm not going to keep bloviating here. Is that the right word, Sean? I think so. Yes, it is. Yes, sir. English major. Um, But I just love this game. It's so good. Dude, it's so good. And shout out to Morgan, the hot goth witch. Um, Definitely the best chick in the series to romance. Dragon Age Origins, my game of the year for 2009. And shout out Dragon Age 4, the Veil Guard, coming this year, will be the game of the year. Some would say Origins is the last good Dragon Age game. Uh, some people would be stupid if they said that. I'm just, I'm just but just mess with it. it is the best one, though. I, I agree with that part. So that's my pick, boys. Let's go ahead and move on to Hodge. This was a very difficult year to choose because there was a lot of good games that came out this year. Um, I'll kind of do the honorable mentions after Sean goes. Just we can go over a couple extras that up. But I'm going to go with Uncharted Two because. Ooh. It is one of the best uh, first party Sony games of all time. This just the starting of where you're on that train, you climb up and then it flashes back to kind of where you were. It's just a great way to open a game. And it improved on the first game substantially, especially in terms of gameplay. Uh, The plot was great. You just you get to you get to meet Chloe and just kind of like, oh, what happened with uh, what's her face? Kristen Stewart looking girl. Um, I can't, I'm forgetting her name right now for some reason, but yeah, it was just a, it was just a step up. It's the best game in the Uncharted series, in my opinion. Uh, it definitely, Elena, it won... Elena, you're, Elena's the Elena, name. yeah, Elena, Elena yeah. sorry. Uh, it's been a while, sorry. <laughs> it's been a while since I played the game, so I, I, should, I need to do that again. Anyway, um, but yeah, so it's, it just, it step it won so many game of the year awards, which is not surprising because it is such a phenomenal game. And so good. yeah, I think it's the, I think it's the best of the series, but it's close with four, I think is probably my second favorite. And they're, they're very, very close to, uh, being kind of tied for my favorite, but Uncharted 2 is probably my favorite of the series. So it's my favorite of 2009. All right. Very good. Awesome game. All right. Sean? All right. Um, my 2009 game, I almost picked Uncharted 2. It was, it was, it was close, but uh, it's going to be a little surprising. Pokemon Platinum. It's my favorite Pokemon game of all time. Absolutely love this Pokemon game. I'll never forget. It came out in the U.S. in March. I remember getting it, and I remember I had baseball practice the next morning at 6 a.m., and I remember I stayed up all night playing it and I was just playing it. I was grinding through and I got to like the, where the fifth badge area is. And I remember my dad was like, all right. He, he came in my room to wake me up. It was like, it was like five 30 in the morning and I was still up and he just looked at me and he's like, you're in for a tough practice, buddy. And I remember getting there and we had to run and I was like dead, absolutely dead. But all I could think about was going back to play Pokemon platinum. Second, I got home, fell asleep right away and then just, booted up and kept playing i played that game so much in 2009 like constantly replaying it constantly trading my team over to diamond or or pearl whichever one 
um, I wanted to trade to, and then restarting the game and playing it again. It saved Generation 4 for me of Pokemon, because Generation 4 is notorious for being very slow compared to Generation 3. But then Platinum, like, they sped up the game. I love the Pokemon of Gen 4. Like, absolutely shout out to Chimchar. Chimchar is the man. Absolutely love him. Absolutely love him. It's my favorite three starters of all time. Piplup, like, of, of the selection of, like, the overall, like, quality of them. Chimchar, Piplup, and Turtwig. Absolutely love them. Just some of the great Pokemon designs. And I think it's one of the last, well, Gen 5 is really good too. But it's one of like the really, really good stories in Pokemon Platinum. So yeah, Pokemon Platinum. Highly, if you're going to play a Pokemon game, highly suggest Pokemon Platinum. So good. So underrated. Awesome game. Pokemon Platinum. I never played that one. I fell off so after good. the second generation though. So, so <laughs> I, good. Yeah. Pokemon Platinum uh, is amazing. Yeah, but uh, really quickly before we move on to 2008, I just want to shout out this game was this year was so good. Arkham Asylum, Assassin's yep. Creed 2, Arkham, Brutal Legend, yep. Prototype, Modern Warfare 2, Infamous, and the most underrated game of all time, The Saboteur, came out all that year. And so that is a banger, banger the year. Saboteur. You know what else came it. out in 2009 that I really liked? I didn't play it in 2009, I played it in 2021. What? Halo Wars. Oh yeah, Halo Wars came out that year too. I've I still haven't played it. I'm not a strategy gamer. I don't like RTSs, but yeah. But no, I did do the Saboteur. It's it, I don't know how well it aged, but it's 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 GTA in like war torn Paris. It's so cool. It's it's awesome. It's so good. Oh, well, and last two shout outs. Like last two shout outs. We Sports Resort, great game, and The Sims Three, awesome games. Yeah, and I wasn't the I think Saboteur was the last game from Pandemic Games, I believe. Okay. I could be wrong, but yeah, it was a phenomenal game. But anyway, yeah, I'm trying to choose my favorite. But anyway, let's move on. 2008. <laughs> you guys, yeah, you guys are like Pokemon experts. You're like, yeah, I, I like Gen 2 versus Gen 3 and Gen 4, and I'm just over here like, I don't know what the hell the gens are. Uh, I oh, only played God. X and Y. X and Y was the only one I played, and I liked it a lot. I thought it was good. Yeah. Um, Sean's giving me the look like, eh. you heathen, how dare you? It's, it's all right. <laughs> Bring up this filth. <laughs> the third worst generation. Which generation is that? That was the 3DS. This is Gen 6. Gen 6, okay. All right, well, shout out to Pokemon. Um, when I finally get that Switch 2, maybe I'll play uh, some kind of Pokemon game on there. We'll <laughs> no, see. you will not. Those games are horrific. <laughs> yeah, the Switch ones are all terrible. Well, do, yeah. do they have uh, any of the old ones on there? No. Like virtual console? No? No. Sadly, no. no. Nintendo, what virtual the hell? Console? What is we? Virtual console? They don't have virtual console anymore. Nintendo. <laughs> shaking my head. All right, boys. Let's keep it moving. My next game is another game that I'm like a broken record, man. It's like the same games. But this one yeah. here is, uh, <laughs> of course, Fable 2. I'm going to put I Love Fable 2 is my game of the year for 2008. This is, of course, shout out to Fable coming next year from uh, playground games which looks amazing this was the best of the original trilogy in my opinion fable 2 is so good um i recently saw a video um from uh, a youtuber that i like uh, mortismal gaming or something where he did a review of fable 2 recently and um he loved it of course it's just so good um the story is incredible um, how you get to interact with the world. You can have a real estate empire. You can have multiple wives. You can be good. You can be evil. You can save people. You can kill them. Uh, it's just awesome. I love Fable 2. The humor is great. That dark British humor. You get a dog. You get a best boy uh, that you get to roam with. And you can pet the dog. And, and he helps you find treasure. And he fights. And it's great. So shout out to Fable 2. My pick for 2008. Claire would agree with you. There we go. Claire shout out agree. to Claire. Great taste. <laughs> All right. Hodge, 2008, um, I wanted, I was really close to picking Dead Space, but I would have been cheating because I never played the original. I only played the remake last year or earlier this year, actually. So I'm not, I didn't pick Dead Space for that reason. Uh, so instead, I'm actually going to go with Call of Duty World at War because Ooh. the the story, the campaign is fine and the the multiplayer was actually really fun. I think it's underrated, but this is the one that introduced us to Nazi zombies, which is the original map is I liked it because it was simple. They, they're they still fun. The later on ones, they are really fun. But the original one where you're just 
four dudes locked in this building and you just have to keep, you know, post like fencing up the walls because the zombies are coming. It was so innovative and they call it, they called it Nazi zombies. I feel like they're afraid to use the word Nazi now. So they just call them zombies now, but uh, the, you're just shooting these Nazi zombies as they're trying to get you. And bro, I got Ray gun, which is the greatest thing <laughs> in the world. So uh, really it's, this is just my favorite because the amount of time I put, and it was the follow up to Modern Warfare One, uh, which was we were also high on that one from the year before. So it was just this was the I'm up till two a.m. on the weekends. Even you know, obviously can't do during school weeks or whatever. But every weekend it was like we're up till two a.m. killing zombies, and it was just like the peak Xbox 360 multiplayer era. And so I just love this game for that. So I'm, I just screw it. It's my game of the year for 2008. Love it. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah sh- shout out to uh, World at War. That's a great pick. Um, I've never been a Zombies fan. I'm not really into that. But I did love World at War's multiplayer. Um, and it was the first time the best kill streak, my favorite kill streak of all time, the dogs. Oh, Dude, they were so they were so deadly. It's if you so saw a dog coming, you're the dogs screwed. In. Yeah. Dude, yeah, the dogs are awesome. That was I love I love that multiplayer. I I play obviously four is still my favorite, but we played the hell out of World at War Two, and that one was yeah, that one was awesome. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Sean, you're up. All right. Uh, 2008 was a really difficult year for me. Uh, I I came really close to choosing uh, Grand Theft Auto Four. Came really close to choosing Metal Gear Solid Four, but ultimately I had to go with Super Smash Brothers Brawl. Um, I adore Super Smash Brothers, as I've talked about. And Brawl, like, the build-up to Brawl was just as fun as playing the game. Like, I remember they had this thing called the Smash Brothers Dojo. And waking up every day, they would post, like, a little new thing about the game. And, like, one day, you you might, you might wake up when it, it posted every day at 6 a.m. Eastern. One morning, you might wake up and check. And it might be, like, they might reveal a whole character. Like, oh, my gosh, Lucas is in the game from what is this mother three? What is that? And you go look up mother three, or you might just get a little screenshot of an item. Like, look, this item's in the game. And you're like, Oh, I waited. So you, <laughs> you, you like, you didn't know what you were getting. And it was so like the buildup was awesome. And then they introduced this whole campaign, the subspace emissary. I'll never forget when they like announced that. And like, I was like, what is going to be a campaign in this game? And it's co-op and you can use your GameCube controller. You don't have to rely on the Wiimote and doing all the, you know, the, you know, the Wii motion and all that crap. So I like, I could not like, I, I just couldn't believe it. And then they introduced snake and Sonic in the game. And just the overall game was awesome. And I know a lot of people like they, they rank brawl as like their least or the second to least favorite behind well, 64 is usually the least favorite, but Brawl is usually because they, they introduce like tripping and it's not it's not melee. But I had so much fun playing Brawl. Like I put thousands of hours into this game on Wii. Um, I absolutely adored this game. Like um, you can create profiles for like multiplayer. Like you like you name your person and they keep track of how many kills you have, like who your main character is. Me and my friends, we maxed out the kill count for each like like it could only go up to nine 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 nine. It was like nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine kills. We maxed them out for like three different profiles, so they Jeez. just stopped keeping track of them. We played it so much, like it's, it was <laughs> such a good game. Absolutely love this game. Super I remember Smash playing it Brawl. in uh, college. I never had a Wii, so sixth I never... grade, sixth grade, yeah. right here. I was in. I was. Uh, I mean, it came out the year before I went to college, but. Uh, in college, one of my buddies on my floor had a Wii and we'd play it. And then my friend, my uh, not friends with him anymore, but in college when we were friends, he uh, uh, he was really good with the Pokemon trainer. I don't know why, okay, but Pokemon he was like trainer. unstoppable with that character. It was crazy. Dude, you <laughs> have no idea about. how much I lost my mind when they announced Pokemon trainer as a character because it was a school day and I remember going in and running up to my friend because i was like this is like peak pokemon for me and like running up and being like D- did you see it and he's like yeah pokemon trainer and like we freaked out my, <laughs> my teacher's probably like what i'm probably like now i probably look back and be like i would have been like what is wrong with these kids <laughs> i yeah. still would think that yeah <laughs> great all right it's awesome right on i have nothing to say for smash brothers because i've never played it sadly um that's a blind spot for me very popular pick but a lot of people love smash. All right, let's go ahead and keep it moving here. So we have 2007 and my game of the year for 2007 
is uh, surprisingly not Halo 3 and not Mass Effect. Shout out to those two masterpiece games. But it is Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, the previous, the game just before Hodge's 2008 pick, World at War. Modern Warfare was the game that really revolutionized the console shooter for me. I don't, well, maybe that's, I mean, Halo was out there. I think so it, maybe that's a weird thing it, to say, but I think it is the one that revolutionized online multiplayer shooters like that game. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's just, it was so good. Like it was so approachable. Um, it was u- new, but user friendly. You didn't have to land six headshots to kill somebody. It just took a couple bullets. It had kill streaks, of course, getting that UAV, getting the, uh, what was it? Was it a missile strike? Air strike. Um, the airstrike the airstrike was the seven what was the five no airstrike was five seven was the helicopter oh, okay yeah yeah you're, you're right okay so yeah and and also the pro tip in that was to when you get the uh the helicopter with your seven kill streak to not call it in until you die because once you die you call in the helicopter those kills would count towards your yeah. streak and you could earn another streak quicker <laughs> yeah which yeah. they took out after all after the next call of duty because people realized how much of a cheat code that was. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that, that game was awesome. Shout out Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. I played thousands of hours on that with my brother, my boy Daniel, and everyone else. Such a great game. Such a great experience. Just playing with the boys on the 360 in the party chat. Just just having a great time. Those were some of the best years of my life playing those games. That was when Call of Duty was great. Like you said, it was simple mm-hmm. and it was fun. So that's my pick. COD 4 Modern Warfare. Hodge. I was I was away. close I was close to picking COD Four because it is my favorite multiplayer game of all time. Like I said, I just played it over the weekend and I, or uh, just the other night, just for a little bit, and it's still as fun as pot as ever. But only <laughs> you look at the player count; like the most played one is Team Deathmatch with like three hundred people active in it. So it's really not much of a pool to pull from to play that game anymore. But it is still just as fun as ever. But I love that game. It's my favorite, yeah, multiplayer game of all time. One of my favorites of all time. But this year, I have to go with my all-time favorite game is Bioshock. This game, it's, like I said, Rapture is the greatest setting in video game history. I can't, there's no, like, Columbia is this close, you know, second, but there's no other, and like, you know, even Liberty City in uh, Cyberpunk is up there, but Rapture is just, it's a character. The The storytelling, or the, um, what's it called, like the, the environmental storytelling is perfect everywhere you go. Like you'll open up just a random room and there's a guy who has like a suicide note next to him or something. There's the, um, the voice recording to say kind of what's happening in his life. And it's just this, it's just so awesome. And then obviously the gameplay of you switch between guns and the plasmids, the big daddies are just terrifying and that you, whenever you hear the little girl talking, you're like, Oh God, there's a big daddy nearby. <laughs> and you just get so scared. The splicers are scary as shit. I remember, I think I've told this story before, but it's like, it's the reason why I love game pass because it's almost like a demo in a way you can play games to see if you like them. And so I miss demos Cause when I bought my 360 in 2007, I went home and downloaded the Bioshock demo cause I heard it was good. And you know, just from the start where the plane goes down, you're in the ocean, you go to the lighthouse and then you just get that reveal of rapture when you're down in the submarine. It's just, it was, I had goosebumps playing it. And then you get to the end of the demo where he traps you in the room and he, Andrew Ryan's talking to you like, who are you? Who sent you? And then it cuts away. And I'm like, I bought it like the next day. I was like, Oh my God, this game's amazing. And it's just, I, it's like a perfect storytelling environmental storytelling or even plot, like the twists that come that you don't even expect there to be a twist. But so I'm sorry if anyone hasn't played it, I'm spoiling that, but it's it's unbelievable. I love this game. It's perfect. It's my favorite game of all time. And yeah, definitely the 2007 was impossible to choose with Halo 3, COD 4, Rock Band, God of War 2. It was such a great year. Amazing but, year. Yeah, but Bioshock, like, we can honestly do an episode on 2007 and we might have to yeah, do it in the future because yeah, yeah, we can. And it's, but yeah, I love it. It's my favorite game of all time. So yeah, Bioshock. Great pick. Yeah, great, really um, good pick. I echo everything you said. One of my favorite games too. Great Excellent year, pick. great game. Yeah, it was really it was really tough pick between that and COD Four. So I'm happy you picked COD Four. So we got to talk about it a little bit, but there we <laughs> yeah, go. It's great. There we go. Anyway, Sean, 2007. 2007. Some say the greatest game year of all time. Others, not so much. 
for me, my pick for 2007. Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3. Everyone knew this was coming, I'm sure. Um, no, but this is this is uh, my favorite game from 07. 07, I know everyone like loves this year. There are a lot of good games. We had mentioned Halo 3, Bioshock, COD 4, Warhawk. Come on, guys, Warhawk. Um, Assassin's Creed. Yeah. No, the first one wasn't so beloved. Um, but yeah, Dragon Ball Z Revolution Budokai Tenkaichi right 3 is like one of the best fighting games of all time in terms of from dragon ball perspective, not from like a mechanics perspective, the amount of characters in this game is ridiculous. You have over like 300 characters to choose from. We're finally getting the sequel this year in sparking zero. Era. Yeah. yeah. So I'm pretty excited. I've been waiting for this since this game came out. Uh, I still go back to this game and play it all the time. It's on the PS2. Um, just the amount of just like customization you have with the amount of fights you can do that you can play the cell games. You can do so much. You go through the dragon ball story, but they have like the GT content in there. They have the dragon ball content. They have what if scenarios. Me and my friends used to make up our own scenarios. Like, like teen Gohan went, came back from like the cell games era and went to like the future and is now fighting with like Gohan, like adult Gohan and like Goku. I don't know. We made like, we made up our own scenarios and just the amount of hours I put into this game uh, was amazing. Like I'll never forget having a sleepover and waking up at like 3 a.m. And I rolled over. I fell asleep at like 11. I rolled over to go, you're still up? He goes, yeah. My friend goes, yeah, I'm still I'm playing Dragon Ball Z. I'm like, all right. And I fell back asleep, woke up three hours later. He was asleep. I booted up, started playing Dragon Ball Z again. Um, yeah, just an amazing game. I, I adore this, the Tenkaichi series. I was really sad to see it like go away when it kind of went to like, you know, the PS3, 360 era. Um, but I'm happy that's coming back. I can't wait. Uh, my only concern is I hope that they don't, uh, I would hope that they have all the same character, like they have all the characters from this game in it and more from, you know, super, but, uh, I'm just so excited. Uh, this is a great game. Highly suggest it. I know 2007 is a great year and I picked this game that no one even remembers came out in 2007. I'm sorry. It's a great game though. Okay. You're muted. Oh, I was just getting it. Yeah, I, I've, I've I always preferred the original Budokai over Budokai Tengaichi. I liked the Tenkaichi. simple side, just side by side fighting rather than the kind of open world fighting. Um, I'm excited for Sparking Zero, but the Tenkaichi games never really spoke to me as much as the original ones. So good. So good. <laughs> All right. Good stuff, Sean. Let's go ahead and keep it moving. We're going to move on to 2006. And this one will also be another one that comes as no surprise because it is a year that one of my favorite games of all time came out. And of course, I'm talking about Todd Howard, The Elder Scrolls IV, Oblivion, fantastic game, beautiful, massive open world, almost unseen at that time to have a world so expansive and so much you could do in it. Awesome story, awesome characters. As always, you have the Fighters Guild, the Thieves Guild the dark brotherhood you have the the main story you have the exploration where you can go off and be like oh what's in this cave and you find like a cool treasure and a little boss at the end it's just a great time the elder scroll is one of my favorite series of all time so i had to absolutely as soon as i saw elder scrolls 4 oblivion i just stopped reading i was like it, this is it nothing stopping this this year i love this game so that is my pick short and sweet because i've talked about it before elder scrolls 4 oblivion Hodge? Yeah, my uh t- I never played Oblivion, so I don't have anything to add to that, but <laughs> my uh my favorite from this year is might be surprising to people. I'm not sure, but um it is Guitar Hero 2. Uh okay. I loved these games. Actually, I mean Guitar Hero 3 is my favorite Guitar Hero game or Metallica, those are both really good. But, Metallica. Yeah. yeah, those ones are both good, but Guitar Hero Aerosmith. 2 Huh? No. Oh, I never played Aerosmith. Aerosmith one. I was gonna say the I was gonna say the Beatles, but that was Rock Band, wasn't it? Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, Rock Band that was Rock Band. That was good too. Yeah. Anyway, carry on. Um, but yeah, this one I believe it was the first one that came out on the next gen. Um, I could be wrong. No, it was play, it was PlayStation Two. Never mind. Oh, and three hundred and sixty. So I guess it was cross gen a little bit. But yeah, this one I it just. I remember playing this one with my friends all the time. It was one of the, it was like before rock band, it was like the get together and just take turns playing songs kind of thing. And me being someone who obviously is obsessed with music, I just had so much fun with this one. The soundtrack was was just a banger soundtrack. Um, But yeah, I didn't have too much to say about it. I just, it was, I kind of missed the days of the plastic guitar 
and rock band sets. The, it was always such a fun party game, to, party thing to do. So Guitar Hero 2. Um, the, also, the, I was really torn, though, between this and actually, I mean, Gears War came out this year, but I'm not, I didn't pick that one. But my f- other this and the Godfather game. These, these are two oh, games that yeah. came out this year. The Godfather is actually my favorite, like, GTA type game. Actually, awesome. second favorite, but uh, it's because uh, a different one, actually. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, but Guitar Hero 2, I have to go. That's probably my favorite that came out this year because I put definitely the most time into that one and I, I, I adored it. But yeah. What right you on. Yeah, those those are fun. I enjoyed mm-hmm. those. Of course, great party game. Go over to see family, you know, break out the guitar hero. Yeah. Uh, Sean, take it away. All right, I think this is pretty obvious. Hodge probably knows. It's Kingdom Hearts 2. I've said so much about this game. It's my second favorite game of all time, so I'm just going to leave it there. Kingdom Hearts 2. One of the greatest franchises ever is Kingdom Hearts, and Kingdom Hearts 2 is the peak of that series. So uh, moving on. Kingdom Hearts 2, great game. That's it. Short and sweet. Okay. I've said so much about it already. Oh, yeah. I'm an idiot. I I had I thought of this game as 2005 because I forgot it didn't That's come out until the US. Yeah, the US I forgot. Yeah, I was thinking of it as 2005. So I guess really that'd probably be my favorite in 2006. Also, but uh, I'll just I'll stick with Guitar Hero for some diversity's sake. Screw it. But there you go. yeah, because I was I literally was thinking of it as 2005, but I forgot it didn't come out till in America till the next year. So that's my bad right there. But yeah. All right, boys. Good stuff. Are you guys ready to be surprised? No. 2005. 2005. Now, I've made jokes how sometimes I could be a broken record because I have these games that I just love so vehemently with all of my heart and soul that I they just I have to pick them when they come up, right? So sometimes you're going to hear me talk about Dragon Age and Fable and freaking Bioware a lot, right? But I'm not always a broken record. Sometimes I go outside the box. And I got some picks that might surprise you. Starting with 2005, I bet you guys didn't see this one coming. My favorite game from 2005 was Need for Speed Most Wanted. This game came out. I'm not a massive Need for Speed guy. I don't play a lot of the Need for Speed. But this game was so phenomenal. Like the way it was set up was like at the start of the game, like you lose your car and you have to start from the bottom. They give you like a a beater, like a hoopty, right? And they have the most wanted list. It's like, I think it's like ten, nine or ten guys, right? And you have to like win a couple races, and then you get to challenge the guy at nine, number nine or ten. And when you beat that guy in the race, you get to take his car, and you can upgrade it and stuff. And then you win a couple races. You also have to evade the police and stuff. There's like a, a police chase in between each section. Um, and then you get to challenge the eight, nine guy and the eight guy and the seven guy. And there's like these boss fight races. And it was so good. It was an open world city. You could drive around. The music was banging in this game. Um, it was just a lot of fun. The police chases were a lot of fun um, where you could like you had to evade them. And there was a whole bunch of destruction and chaos. Um, the boss fight races were so good. The cars, the music, it actually had a pretty decent story. Um, with like a kind of almost twist ending dude it was a great game and I, like i said i'm not a big man uh not a big need for speed guy like i don't play all the games i haven't played any of the new ones but this game was freaking awesome shout out need for speed most wanted my pick for 2005 did either of you guys play this at all i've never played a need for speed game that's really interesting uh, i'm shocked by this pick uh, I'm surprised this is the racing game you picked because there's another racing game that came out that year, Midnight Club 3 Double Edition, which is a great game. I didn't pick that, but that's a great game. <laughs> it's named after Rockstar. me. So. Shout out to Rockstar. I don't remember if I played this one. I did play some of the Need for Speeds, but they all the, every racing game has been the same to me. I don't really think anything <laughs> about them. I just vroom, vroom, go fast, win race. So. That's why this one was so cool because they had the – you had to make your way up the most wanted list and had those yeah. boss races and then you get their cars and the cars were awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I couldn't, I don't remember. I, cause I did, I remember, you know, when I was a kid get having a PlayStation two, I was just playing the games that were handed to me basically. So I, I probably did. Cause I, this, I, I do when you said it instantly, I remembered the box art because it's, mm-hmm. it's just a very re- memorable box art for some reason. So I do remember it. So I probably did own it. I, probably remember just looking at it all the time in my own basement or whatever but yeah it's i do remember the need for speed games were like known as the favorites for a lot of people um Mm -hmm. but yeah that's not what i picked what i did pick is since i'm dumb and 
forgot that Kingdom Hearts 2 was actually 2006. I'm going to go with God of War <laughs> because God of War is one of my favorite games of all time. As we've discussed, it was on my top 10 list. Uh, the first one, I loved it. It was a very, very basic but um, intriguing revenge story of the man who was about to lose a battle. And he said, Ares, if you help me win this battle, you know, I'm yours forever. And Ares does that and tricks him into doing some bad shit that he doesn't like. So he says, all right, screw it. I'm going to kill the God of war. And the whole game is just trying to get to him to kill him. And it's, it's just a, amazing. The gameplay was revolutionary at the time, other than the quick time events, which I hate, but that's what God of war is known for at this point. And, uh, but the, the story, it was just, and the gameplay was so much fun. It was revolutionary at the time, and I love it. God of War, great game. All right. Did you want to throw a bar or two at Kingdom Hearts 2 quickly since you... Uh, no, you know, it's I, it's one of my favorite we did a whole episode. Also. We did a whole episode on Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, it's... You it's, did, that's right. I love it. I do love Kingdom Hearts 2, but it's... Yeah, since I fucked up, I'm just going <laughs> to go with the games I went with. So. All right. <laughs> the God Sean? Shame. Shame. I know. That's my Shame. bad. I forgot about the no. split oh. releases. Um. All right. My 2005 game of the year. Oh, by the way, God of War. I really need to play the original like, God of War. Oh, I really so do. good. Yeah. I love it. Um, 2005 for me, Mario and Luigi Partners in Time, the second ever Mario and Luigi RPG game. Um, this game is fantastic. It was an early, early DS game, like one of the one of the earliest DS games that came out. Um, I absolutely love this game. The writing in the Mario and Luigi games is hilarious, and each game just kind of gets better and better. They like they get more comfortable with the writing. Um, I remember getting this game and just audibly laughing all the time. You know, nine year old me sitting there like, "Blah, ah, is so funny!" My high pitched voice. Um, it's great. It actually t- took place in the Mushroom Kingdom, which the first Mario and Luigi game didn't, which was a little controversial at the time. Um, this one actually does. Um, it's so cool because um, you get to control both Mario and Luigi, but then there's like sections where you control baby Mario and baby Luigi who come, who get transported here from back in time. And it's like, it's just the whole mechanics really cool. And like the turn-based combat, you can do moves like a, like a power move with baby Mario and Mario combined and baby Luigi and Luigi combined or vice versa. And just traversing the world using Mario and Luigi, certain like power-ups you can get. Um, the turn-based combat is really it's turn-based but it's just like action prompts and button prompts you have to press and it's like a really fun game it's really difficult too as like a kid i, I really str- it took me like two years to beat this game but yeah i love this game if if you haven't played a mario and luigi game of all the games i would suggest playing this one first to be honest i would love if they re-released this on switch i would absolutely love that but yeah it's a great game and they did a really good um good job using like the um the touchscreen mechanics for this game They're like you know early ds they tried to like you know shape in the touchscreen all the time but they did a really good job with this game yeah mario and luigi partners in time hmm. okay all right, all right. good one. stuff <laughs> yeah uh nothing to say on that one but i'm sure you haven't played it you haven't played it that's crazy <laughs> never thought you i thought i heard nintendo all fan all midnight i know hasn't played yeah, it yeah you know it is crazy um <laughs> All right, guys, let's go ahead and move into 2004. Jeez. And my pick, Four. my pick for 2004 is going to be a little game from Rockstar, Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas. This game was awesome. I really loved like the whole 90s, like hip hop, you know, gang, gang war uh, setting that they had uh, going on there. Those vibes driving around the city. Super awesome. The story, the characters were great. Uh, Just getting into a lot of fun, traversing the open world, picking up hookers, killing people, um, just doing all kinds of crazy stuff. It's Grand Theft Auto. You know what it's about. Um, That game was fantastic. Um, Of course, one of the best, one of the great memes of all time uh, where you got uh, CJ walking down. He's like, oh, shit. Here we go again. (laughs) San Andreas. Uh, And the hot coffee mod, too. That was a big... uh, Big drama. Almost got it banned. Was that had the one where you could bang people or whatever? Yeah, one of the developers had like some mode where you could bang people and people found out how to get into that mode and then they got in a lot of trouble. They almost got an adults only rating. So um yeah, so San Andreas, awesome game. That is my pick for two thousand and four. Any thoughts? Uh, I've never played the that era of GTA games. I've only played four on. 
I, I do, I'm tempted to go, you know, before I booted up South Park Stick of Truth, I almost booted up San Andreas and said, I'm going to play through San Andreas, but I chose South Park. Mm. Well, South Park's awesome, so good pick. Yeah, I've never been a GTA fan. I just, a 3 was the only one I've ever cared about or played and liked because it was like the first open world game, and I thought it was really cool that you could go through this giant map, even though now it's <laughs> tiny comparatively, but... Um, yeah, I've never, I've never been a GTA fan. People, most people know that about me. I'm like the only person in the world who hasn't played GTA Five. So, um, so yeah, good. I, I, I'm sure it is. I just, I don't care. Red Dead Redemption has always been my favorite Rockstar game. It's the only one I played through all the way through and really loved. So, yeah, it's, I, I'm, I'm sure it's good. It's just not for me. But uh, I'm also too nice of a person. I always like treating video game characters really well. And so the fact that you're playing as a criminal who steals cars, I uh, <laughs> just felt bad for the non-existent person that I'm stealing from. I don't know. But um, my for 2004, this was a very difficult choice because uh, I was very torn between Halo 2 and the one I'm going with, which is Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3. Because as I've said, this is one of my this was on my top 10 of all time. I loved this game. It the open world kind of flying to where you have to go fight someone thing was cool. You could find secrets to where you unlock Broly or the Super Saiyan 4 transformation or Omega Shenron. And it was just this really cool advancement on the two. Because I even like Budokai 2 where you're on the little board game. But I know a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, I know a lot of people don't like that one. But I I always really loved it. And then the first one, obviously, it's just kind of the cutscenes go through the you know the story first one doesn't hold up yeah it's it's not as good uh but i did play i did buy the hd remaster on 360 and play them again because i did love them that much but and it was only one and three which i was kind of sad they didn't have two included but budokai 3 it was cool because it was one of the it was like the first one that had the huge roster of characters like everyone from that era was playable on it basically and they had gt characters hidden in there and stuff like that so it was really cool i loved it obviously halo 2 is kind of the choice that a lot of people would say no because halo 2 is an amazing game it's just budokai 3 i didn't have an xbox as a kid the og one so budokai 3 was the game i played all the time because i did have a ps2 so i gotta pick budokai 3 over halo 2 but they're both obviously amazing games and jack 3 budokai 3 which is great but budokai 3 is amazing mm-hmm. great game. I love i'll it. never it's forget like favorite. unlocking omega shenron and like freaking mm-hmm. out because you're like what is like what yeah. this is possible or mm-hmm. just like unlocking oob and being like this is crazy i remember just playing that that story mode and just flying around looking for dragon balls the whole time yeah because like, you have the dragon like, radar and stuff yeah. your whole it's like that on the oh my gosh one of those other sleepovers i had we fell asleep once and the dragon radar was going off the whole time and like you know when you're like in a hazy sleep and you can kind of hear stuff mm-hmm. i remember just hearing the And I'm like, oh my god! Someone turn the PS2 off. <laughs> and um, yeah, that was fun. I I, I loved playing through the. Camp. I remember playing through Yamsha's and being like, yeah, I'm Yamsha. I'm so cool. And being like, Yamsha's, you're, you're trash. Yeah, you're awful. And just doing the tournaments where you just go up the bracket. Oh, yeah. oh, I yeah. love that game so much. It's yeah, so me fun. too. Yeah, it's a great game. Yeah. All right. What about you, Sean? What's your favorite of the year? All right, 2004, uh, this is an easy pick for me. It's Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door. It's one of my favorite games of all time. It was on my top 10 list. Um, this is like, the of all the Mario RPG games, well, I have back-to-back Mario RPG games, I just realized that. Um, of all the Mario RPG games, this is the best one of all time. This is like, uh, the writing for Paper Mario is fantastic, and all the Mario RPG games in general, but the writing in this one is absolutely outstanding. Um, the partners in this game are just so memorable. Like I love them all so much. You get a little Yoshi riding around. A little Yoshi is so much fun. You get to name it too, and the color is different depending on like what you do in the game. Um, the chapters are great. Like there's so much. Like there's not one bad chapter in this game. People think chapter two was like the worst, and it's still considered like a really good chapter. Uh, shout out to Dukeless chapter four. Dukeless, I absolutely love that concept of a boss where he's. He basically steals a letter and like you're supposed to type in, a, you're supposed to guess his name, but on the keyboard, you cannot type in a certain letter because it's like not there on the keyboard. You have to go, you have to go in the world and find that letter to get it back oh, on the keyboard. Cool. It's such a cool, it's such a cool concept. Is this one that was um, remastered? Yeah, it was, re, it was remade, remade, not remastered, remade, remade okay. um, for Switch. I played it back in January. Yeah, it's, okay. it's an amazing game. Um, I adore it. Like absolutely like, just fantastic game the combat is great took everything regular paper mario had and just upped it to like 
the nth degree and it's a shame that it's like the last real paper mario game we had like turn-based true rpg um and shout out to the last boss this game is so broken that if you play a certain way you can like beat the last boss in like one turn it's great <laughs> i love it speedrunner's dream but yeah paper go. mario the thousand year door nice all right Good stuff. Um, I do want to take an opportunity real quick to let you guys know in the audience. Um, let us know in the comment section who you think has the best list when we're done with everything. Who had the best list? Was it Sean? Was it Hodge? Was it me? Of course it was. Um, and let us know also your list if you want. We'd love to see that. Uh, some people did that on the last video, and that was really cool seeing some lists, some great games. And most people picked me. <laughs> Uh, I don't know that that's factually accurate, but uh, anyway, (laughs) let's go ahead and move on now to 2003. That was a long time ago, huh? My pick for 2003 is another game that I have talked about before. This is one of my favorite games of literally all time. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic from Bioware. This game is being remade right now. It's in a bit of a turmoil, but I'm going to believe and hope that it is going to come out. And if this remake comes out, guys, if you've never played this game, you have to play the remake because this is one of the best stories ever. And it is so good. I'm not going to say anything else. I don't want to spoil anything. The characters and the story is absolutely freaking incredible. The choice and consequence, of course, is there and is great. Um, And it's just an awesome Star Wars experience. You get to roll around, become a Jedi, make your lightsaber, fuck some people up. And it's just awesome. So shout out to Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. My pick for 2003. I don't need to say anything else about it because I've said it before. Yeah, it's Hot. great. You get, to, you get to run around as Rey. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rey Skywalker. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Great. <laughs> that is That it was way before Rey. Yeah. Thank God. Before the All Acolyte? Right. <laughs> <laughs> God. That, game, um, that show got canceled. No, oh, what a shame! Oh no, all six people are so upset. Um, I actually, ne- I never played this one. It's like one of my be- bigger gaming sins, which is why I'm hoping that this remake does come out because I do want to play it. But if it doesn't, then I-, I do own it. I'm pretty sure. I think it was a game with gold a while ago or something like that. So mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I do own both Kotors, and I definitely I need to play them. But, um, but my choice for 2003 is a game not a lot of people have really played but i was obsessed with it was uh star wars jedi knight jedi academy i loved this game i i mean i've always loved all like the dark forces and the jedi knight games and stuff they're all great but this one it had a mode called siege mode which is basically like the battlefront of you kind of have to break through the defenses to get to the end of the thing and i played it obsessively there was a hoth level there's one where you're at the jedi temple and everyone plays as a jedi that one was awesome. It was just, I was, ups- and this was kind of back in the early days of online computer gaming. Like, so it was very, you know, ancient basically, but it was so much fun. I put so much time into this game. And then I also knew how to put the cheat. I, you could like pull up the coding or whatever, and you could put cheat modes in, you, know, you could put God mode in and just go through massacring everyone and uh, in single player, not multiplayer. Cause I'm not a cheater like that, but it was, I loved this game. It was so awesome. So, I mean, obviously many better games probably came out that year. Like I love Jack Two. Simpsons hit and run is one of, is actually my favorite GTA type game of all time. Since I it's Simpsons hit and run. It's Great perfect. Game. Great game. It's, yeah. And then uh, the Lord of the Rings Return of the King game was also amazing from that year. Unbelievable. That, Unbelievable it was game. Best movie tie in game of all time by far. It was so good. Uh, but yeah, Jedi Academy was one I obsessively played that year. So that's that's my game of the year for 2003. Yeah. Shout out to that's a good pick. Um, Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. Uh, I believe on a previous episode, I mentioned uh, my little story about Midnight Small D Energy uh, yeah. when I was playing uh, Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Outcast on that one. And I used to go in the private serv- uh, servers and I was an admin and I would I would try to convince people to attack me and then I would turn into an admin and kick their ass and like time them out and stuff. Uh, yeah, basically Reddit mod before Reddit mods, dude. That's not that's not tiny D energy. That's no D energy. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty lame. It was pretty lame, but I, I had I had fun though. Yeah. What can I say? Uh Sean, you're up. We got back to back Star Wars games. I'm gonna surprise you with another Star Wars game. No, I'm kidding. Oh, 
the year of the Star, Star Wars, Wars. Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3, Rebels for now. I never played that game. Um, <laughs> my game is one of the greatest uh, games of all time. It's called The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. Um, this game, huge, hugely controversial at the time due to the art style, but That's why it is aged <laughs> beautifully. This game is beautiful to look at. Uh, the story is fantastic in The Wind Waker. I like love the even though it's like looks like kitty and charmy this is like a, one of the more darker zelda stories especially the end scene if you know how this game ends the way that spoiler link kills ganon in this game just spoiler there if you didn't know i know right link kills ganon the way that scene of him killing ganon is probably the most like adult thing link has ever done to in like in terms of like killing someone it's pretty pretty crazy uh, i love the world of zelda i mean of um wind waker uh all the dungeons in this game are really cool like really interestingly designed like the, f- the first one the forsaken fortress you you get stranded there without a sword and you have to sneak around without getting caught you're like hiding in barrels and everything like that and it's just so such a cool design and this was almost like semi open world you could float around the entire ocean go to any island you wanted at first and it was so cool and I remember seeing it for the first time and instantly falling in love with it. And I remember running around my backyard pretending to be Toon Link. God, I love this game. Uh, Wind Waker is amazing. And it's like if you it's so a shame that it's stranded on GameCube and the Wii U because the Wii U version that came out in 2014 is so good. But like nobody played it because it was on Wii U unless you owned a Wii U like I did. Um, it was so good, and I really would love for them to come out with this on Switch or Switch Two. Like this game is criminally underrated. Great Zelda game. Yeah, I've right heard on. I've heard it's really good. It, uh, but it's I was so one of those good. people who well, I never owned a GameCube. Firstly, but I was also one of those people who just didn't think it looked very good. I, like as an so adult, good. I can kind of I can I'm more into the the artsy look of it. But as a kid, I was like I don't because you know I had known about. I, ocarina of time and uh majora's mask i was like i like that art style not this cartoon dude dude, there's a there's a part in this game like a little like side thing that you can do where you go into an auction house and they're just auctioning off stuff and you're like (laughs) toon link in the background just holding up like you're just like press press the a button to like hold up your your little um little sign it is so much oh my god i i adore this game the music is fantastic in this game too aren't they remaking that no i thought uh, no, or, no, 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 remastering it. No, what the hell? Okay, I thought I saw something. All right, I'm I'm on drugs. All right, good stuff, Sean. Shall we move on? Yes. Ooh, rhyming, rhyming accidentally. 2002. What a great year it was. My pick from 2002. This is the game that I'm actually going to recommend to my co-host Hodge because he mentioned that he never really played any of the older Grand Theft Auto games at all. Um, this Grand Theft Auto game is my personal favorite. It's phenomenal. And of course, I'm talking about Grand Theft Auto Vice City. This takes place in the 80s in Miami. You're walking around in like the freaking Hawaiian shirts. Um, it's got the Miami Vice vibes. It's got amazing soundtrack. It's all 80s bangers, dude. Just just amazing soundtrack as you're driving around the city. Great story. Just an awesome look small little open world that you can be down there in Miami. Um, I love this game. I think this is a game that you might like Hodge, especially if you can get into some 80s vibes. Um, That's my pick, GTA Vice City. I love this game so much. Like I said, it is by far, by far actually my favorite GTA game of all time. Yeah, this is one I know a lot of. Oh, sorry, you go. No, I'll just say my only memory about Vice City is my cousin who was 12 at the time. We were over his house and we were in his room, and he was playing the game had just come out. He was playing Vice City, and he looks at me and goes, "Do not tell your mom." <laughs> <laughs> that was, that's my only memory of Vice City. That's funny. Yeah, it was one my brother owned, uh, and I know he played it and really loved it. But it, I just like I said, I could never get into Grand Theft. I mean, maybe isn't it? Maybe you know, me at thirty three, I might enjoy it a little more. But as a kid, I was like, eh, I don't care about because obviously as a kid who gives a shit about like miami scenes and all that kind of crap so uh i might enjoy it now but i know did those releases ever get like patched and fixed or do they still i I think they did get fixed i'm pretty sure they got fixed 
Are you talking about the remasters? Yeah, that I came think, out. And I think like they are horrible. <laughs> yeah. I think they're at least better now. And Vice City uh, was the best of the three at launch as far as performance. Mm. Yeah, I know this is a lot of people's favorite, at least until like five came out. I know Vice City was one everyone was like, this is the best Grand Theft Auto game. So, yeah, I may enjoy it and maybe one day. But and thankfully, this is back in the day when games weren't 100 hours long. So I would be able to actually mm-hmm. beat it pretty quickly. Thankfully. Yeah, it's probably like 20 hours ish. Yeah, if I had to guess. back, back so. when 20 hours was a long game. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. I miss those What's yours, Hodge? Mine is going to be no surprise. It is Kingdom Hearts. Uh, one of my favorite games. Yeah, one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, I don't need to go into it for uh, it just it's a great story about light versus dark. It has all my favorite, you know, Disney movies from growing up in it. So it's always been a game that's meant a lot to me. Obviously, I have a freaking Keyblade tattooed on my forearm. So I I love Kingdom Hearts. This game will forever be one of my favorite games of all time. And it was, it was I mean, it's not wasn't tough, obviously, to pick Kingdom Hearts. But with Sly Cooper and Jedi Outcast coming out that year, those were also games I really loved. Uh, especially I still need to play the first Sly Cooper. I bought it on PlayStation just recently. I need to go through and play it again. But uh, yeah, Kingdom Hearts is no surprise. My favorite game from that year. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I just want to say shout out to um, real quick shout out to our OnlyFans. If you want to see photos and videos of Hodges' other tattoos, make yeah. sure you visit onlyfans.com slash games over plastic. <laughs> so yeah. all right. Yeah. Sean. All right. This is a really this is a really tough for me. Um, two thousand two. Obviously Hodge had Kingdom Hearts there, and this is a, came down to a really tough decision, but ultimately I went with Super Mario Sunshine. Um, I over this. I was going back and forth between this and Kingdom Hearts, but I went with Sunshine. Uh, Sunshine. I got two weeks after my, it came out. Literally two weeks after I got my GameCube in two thousand two, um, and I. This is my favorite three D Mario game. I have. I, I. I've met basically memorized like this game's layout. I, I know exactly where everything is. Like, I know how to get all the shines. I know where all the blue coins are. And people who know this game, like they know the blue coins are very tedious to get. And some of them are like, like why would you just randomly spray this pot to get a blue coin? And like I, I just know that. Um, um, I, I still like have like I can still like hum the songs in my head. I, I can still picture running around that world, just running around with flood squirting all like the the goop around the um Delfino Island. It's it's based off Hawaii, which I really like now because I'm being in the Hawaiian mood. Um, the tropical theme of Mario is so usually you get like one featured world that's like tropical, but like it's the whole game is just tropical vibes. This is an amusement park world, which is really cool. Like, and all the, all the different su- the shine sprites you're trying to rescue are based off of like amusement park rides. Um, they introduced Yoshi, the first 3d Mario game where you could play as Yoshi, like play on Yoshi, which is really cool. Um, it introduced Bowser jr. And shadow Mario. I absolutely adore this game. And so many people have like problems with it. And it's, it's, you can tell it's totally rushed because Nintendo was trying to get it out because GameCube didn't have many games. And so they cut some content, and there's some stuff that's like so glitchy and janky, but it, the mechanic, like the game, just controls so much better than Mario 64. It's a huge improvement. Um, shout out to the Piantas; they inter- they're introduced in this game, and there's just so many memorable things. The episode eight of the um, of the beach level, you have to it's called the, the watermelon contest you have to like bring this giant watermelon down from like the top of the level all the way down the bottom without hitting anything or it'll explode just so much fun uh i love this game uh super mario sunshine great game play it please now <laughs> yeah actually i played um, it uh when they came out that collection on switch uh, yeah yeah that collection a little bit and i really liked it it's not obviously my game of the year but it was a really fun so i because I remember it was one of those that was pretty divisive when that one came out, too. A lot of people didn't like well, it, but it, it's hard because it was a follow up to Mario 64. And everyone's mm. like, oh, this is not Mario 64. It's like, yeah. well, that's what Nintendo does. They, they make different things. Yeah, but I, I did enjoy I, I didn't beat it, but I did play it a bunch and I did enjoy what I played of it. I, it's one I should probably go back to eventually. But yeah, it was it, I had fallen off my switch pretty hard. So I played all three of them mario games pretty briefly i beat 64 that i kind of briefly did sunshine and galaxy and then kind of fell off both of them but yeah it's a good game though right on yeah um of course i didn't own a gamecube sadly um i love absolutely love mario 64 though um so this was the follow-up to that i'm sure it was great too obviously heard great things about it um 
2001. Let's go. Let's keep it moving. So my pick for 2001 sad. is sad year. Why was it sad, Sean? 2001, sad year. Come on. Oh, you, oh, 9-11? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Dude. We're not, we're not going to worry about that, though. We're talking about video games. So yeah, in 2001, a video game. Yeah, everyone remembers where they were when that happened. But rest in peace to all those people. But uh, 2001, something more positive happened. And that was the release of a little game called Dark Age of Camelot. And I've talked about it before. This is my favorite MMORPG of all time. Massively multiplayer online role-playing game. Big game, playing with hundreds to thousands of people. The PvP was awesome. There was all these different classes. Three different uh, regions that you could pick up. uh, Pick that had all different classes. And they were all kind of fighting each other. Um, And it was just awesome. I'm not going to go into too much depth about it because you guys haven't played it and I've already talked about it, but dark age of Camelot was an awesome role-playing game that I spent thousands of hours playing with my best friend, Henry. We had a blast in there. It was so good. That's my pick. Dark age of Camelot. I have nothing. Hodge. To add. <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite uh, of 2001, I am going to go with this one, even though I didn't own it at the time. I played it all the time at my friend's houses was the original Halo Combat Evolved. Uh, one of the most defining it's what sold the Xbox, basically, is the reason why people bought it. It's one of the best uh, introductions to kind of the first person shooter genre of all time. It's legendary online mode playing Blood Gulch and, you know, all the great levels there and whatnot um yeah even though i didn't own this it was one of those where anytime a friend was like hey come over or sleep over or whatever it was like yes they have an xbox we're gonna play halo all night long like that's it was so exciting because i was a ps2 kid i didn't have an xbox so i always loved any chance i had my cousins had uh the xboxes they were obsessed with halo and halo 2 when they came out so i'd always get to play at their house but yeah halo it was just a legendary game that you know gave us master chief even though halo is not in the greatest spot right now it uh the original trilogy from bungie is one of the greatest trilogies of all time and it started with halo and that game is amazing and also the the fun physics of it you know rocket launch uh grenade jumps and all that jazz it's just it's awesome i love halo it's yeah, my game of the year. It was it was tough though because also Jack and Daxter came out that year, which I loved, and Twisted Metal Black. But Halo is definitely best of two thousand one, in my opinion. Awesome pick. Halo's awesome. Love it. Um, I always find it kind of stupid when people are like, "Halo's falling off." It's like, dude, it's a twenty three year old series. Like, what do you want? Yeah. You think people are still going to be so thrilled about a game twenty three years later? Yeah. Obviously, interest is going to wane. New games come out, you know. But uh, Halo Infinite is still a good game. But yeah, shout out to Halo Combat Evolved. Awesome pick. Sean Mason. All right, my pick, uh, it's probably going to be a surprise to not a lot of people. It's my third favorite Final Fantasy game of all time, and it's an amazing game. Final Fantasy X, and I know this is very divisive among people. Some people don't like this game. It's the first 3D, fully voice-acted Final Fantasy. Um, This blew my mind as a kid. I I remember seeing my cousin play it, and just losing i couldn't believe what i was seeing i thought it was like graphics will never get better than this um and it still it still looks it's a really pretty game today um but this game just goes like the story is right there with seven as like really deeply emotional and like i was really connected to these characters um this this game is a lot i think it's a lot sadder than seven um and it's all about self-sacrifice and you know building relationships and growing into yourself um I don't really want to reveal. I don't want to reveal anything about the story because there's a lot of twists and turns in the story, um, and there's a lot of sacrifice in this game. Um, but this game's awesome. The the um, sphere grid system to like level up your characters and upgrade them is just unbelievable. It's like one of the best like upgrade systems in JRPGs around. Uh, I, I can't speak more highly of this game, and it gave me one of my favorite Final Fantasy characters ever. Hodge, you'll know him because he's from Kingdom Hearts Two. Aaron. Oh yeah, from, uh, yep, yeah. yeah. He's, you find him in the should, underworld. Yeah, you should see him in, in this game. He is insanely good. He's like a party member, and he's yeah. so like how he talks in that game. How he's so like monotone and low. That's how he mm-hmm. is in this game, and it's great. And he really grows into himself, and I, I love it. Shout out to Final Fantasy X, and shout out to Blitzball. This in like little mini game they introduced Blitzball, and it was so much fun. 
Yeah, I've never played 10, but that's the only thing I ever think of when someone mentions 10 is that blitz ball thing, because I just remember it being like huge for some reason. <laughs> oh, t- well, Tid- um, Titus is in this. A lot of Kingdom Hearts characters were in this game. Titus, uh, yeah. Waka. Waka's like a professional. Bl- Waka and Titus are professional blitz ball players. Yeah. They're like celebrities. Yeah, I oh. even though I hadn't played this game, when when you are on Destiny Islands and all the Final Fantasy X characters that are as kids, I knew who they were, but I had obviously didn't know them that well because i had never played 10 but i knew who they were but yeah show me your stuff brother waka (laughs) awesome great game all right last Uh, year final fantasy 10 huh you know shout out to this game because friend of the show lock mort uh this is the game that broke lock and made him hate weebs and made him famously hate weebery because he was a final fantasy fan until he played 10 and he thought it was absolute trash and it just completely like burnt like scorched the earth now he's like he hates weebery so shout out to final fantasy 10 um i've never played it um the only final fantasies that i've played are seven seven remake 13 and 16 so but yeah um that game is it's mostly beloved some people hate it but most, a lot of people love it so a lot of revision on it yeah so let's go ahead and move on to our final year 2000 In the this year is gonna be 2000. A- yeah. <laughs> funny bit there um conan, conan shout out to colin conan mm-hmm. um my pick here this is gonna probably surprise some of you Definitely not something you would have seen coming. I'm talking about 2K, and I'm talking about NFL 2K1 on the Dreamcast. Played this game a ton. Played this at work uh, when I was working at a Funko Land with my friend Henry. Oh my uh, that was like the pre the precursor to GameStop. GameStop bought them out. We had a Funko and we Land. used to have a. We used to have a Dreamcast on the counter for the for the customers to play, but a lot of times it'd be kind of slow in there, so we'd be playing some uh, NFL 2K1 on the Dreamcast versus each other and stuff on the clock, getting that getting that minimum wage five fifteen an hour or whatever it was. It was great. Um, that was a great game. The graphics at the time were revolutionary. Like it was such a huge step up from like the previous games. Like the it was. Uh, polygonal graphics or whatever but it was like rounded not square polygonal so it almost looked realistic it looked amazing back then i couldn't believe it it still looks okay today even um but that game was awesome really fun gameplay playing as the steelers as always the best team and uh that's my pick nfl 2k1 i'm sure not many people saw that one coming Hmm. what say ye and get into your games i never played an nfl 2k game I was always Madden, so I don't know. I never, never really, played it. it yeah, but, I never played it. Yeah. But uh, my game for the year 2000, it's probably not that much of a surprise, 2000. but maybe. I don't know. Because um, I was torn between two games. They're both my second favorite in their respective um, like IP so or whatever. On, let me guess. Ready? Spyro, Year of the Dragon. Yep. That's the, yeah. that's the one I went with. I was Pokemon very, Yellow. I was very close. That's 99. Yeah. Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. The I was very close to going with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, but the first one was always my favorite, not because of the gameplay. The gameplay in 2 is phenomenal, but I like the soundtrack for Pro Skater 1 better, so that's why it's always been my favorite one. But uh, Year of the Dragon is my second favorite from that trilogy because obviously Ripto's Rage is the best one. But in Year of the Dragon, you got to play as more characters. You got to go into their worlds and do kind of new things and stuff. And uh, Year of the Dragon, it's very fun. I wish they would make a Spyro 4, but, you know, that's not the kind of crappy ones that they made after this one. But, uh, yeah, Year of the Dragon, definitely my game of 2000. All right. Okay. I, right I, great game, Hodge. Really, my sister loves this game as well. So, um I love this game. Yeah. What do you like more though, Sean? Ripto's Rage. It's the best Spyro game. I think you meant what's your favorite of 2000. Oh. <laughs> what's your <laughs> 2000 <laughs> game of the oh, year? Oh, my bad. I thought you were talking about, you know. All right. Uh, yeah, so Ripto's my, Rage is better. Sorry. <laughs> um, my game of the year from 2000 is another Legend of Zelda game, and that is The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Ooh. Um this is one of my favorite N64 games of all time. Um, yeah, one probably my second favorite N64 game of all time, behind Paper Mario, the first Paper Mario game. 
Um, I love Majora's Mask, though. Like, it was so different than anything we've gotten before in, like, a Zelda game. Like, you don't fight Ganon in this game. This is a spoiler. This is one of the games you don't fight Ganon. <laughs> um, and it was so cool, like, the whole time aspect. Like, you're on a you're on a clock, and you have to, like, you can slow down time. You have to go back in time. If, if, if you hit the time limit, the moon comes down and basically destroys the world. Um, it's weird because there's only four dungeons in the game, but... Again, there's so much to do. There's like side quests that are time dependent, so you can miss side quests depending on like the time of day. Like there's one where you have to follow a mailman around, and you have to like make sure you're at a certain place by the mailman. Or there's like a date that goes on at one point. And you have to like interrupt the date. Um, it is so cool, and just like putting all the different masks on and like running around as like different creatures in the Zelda world was so interesting. And I think Skull Kid as a villain is so creepy, and the music of the Zelda games are always good, but the music in this game is awesome. And there's a, and as the day goes on, like the, the main hub of the, the hub world is like called, it's called, um, um, the hub. What is this? What's the town called? Clock. Uh, I can't clock town, clock town. The, like the main overworld theme as the day gets later and gets closer to like the end of the world, the song gets like faster and faster and it just gets so creepy. And, like, the, the NPCs start noticing the moon coming down. And, I don't know, this game was just awesome. And it, I really, really love this game. I really, I need to go back to this one because I felt, because I just wasn't good at the time timer thing. I don't like games with timers. Like, I did have Ted, Ted Dead Rising as one of my, like, backups is from uh, 2006. But I dropped that game because once you hit a certain time, like, you lose the truth forever. And I was like, I don't don't put me on a timer. I don't like that, but I know that's the point of this game. It's not just a redundant timer. That's just there for no reason. It's part of the plot. So I do want to, I need to go back to this one, but cause Ocarina of time is one of the greatest games of all time. But this one, I just, I never got to finish because I was too frustrated with, with constantly running out of time. Yeah. It, it's, it's really good. And uh, you can, you can so see that they, I can't, they made this game in a year and a half, like after Ocarina of time, like that, it only took me a year and a half to make. And they it's they took the engine right from Ocarina, but it's like it's it's and it introduced the concept of uh, multiple timelines of Zelda here. We got like if Link never if Link traveled back to the past, then Ocarina. This is like that continuation of that timeline. Mm -hmm. So interesting. Yeah, that's All really right. cool. Great stuff. Great game. I haven't played it, but I've heard it's great. Um, I don't know why I didn't play this game because I did play Ocarina of Time and I loved it. It's a it was a really late 64 game. It's like a really late 64 game. Yeah, that must be. Maybe that's why. Maybe I had moved on to, uh, you know, the other consoles, but with PS2. Dreamcast. All right, guys. Right. So that's it. That was our games of the year from 2009 to 2000. Uh, real quick for audio listeners who don't have the benefit of the fantastic graphics to look at. Um, let's go through and just recite our list uh, quickly. So I'll go first. My I had Dragon Age Origins, Fable 2, COD 4 Modern Warfare, Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion, Need for Speed Most Wanted, GTA San Andreas, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, Couture. GTA Vice City, Dark Age of Camelot, and then NFL 2K1. Hodge, real quick, what was your list? I had, from 2009 to 2000, Uncharted 2, Call of Duty World at War, Bioshock, Guitar Hero 2, God of War, Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3, Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy, stupid name, but great game, uh, <laughs> uh, Kingdom Hearts, Halo Combat Evolved, and Spyro Year of the Dragon. And then, Sean, what was your list? Starting from 09, I had Pokemon Platinum on the Nintendo DS, Super Smash Bros. Brawl on the Nintendo Wii, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3 on the PS2. This is a different game than Hodges. I know, a very similar <laughs> name, but different game. Uh, 2006, Kingdom Hearts 2 on the PS2. 2005, Mario & Luigi Partners in Time on the Nintendo DS. 2004, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Deer on the Nintendo GameCube. 2003, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker on the Nintendo GameCube. 2001, Final Fantasy X on the PlayStation 2. And finally, 2000, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Masks, Mask on the N64. In the year 2000. <laughs> All right, boys. It's been a lot of fun. So that's it. That was our list. It's been an awesome episode. Thank you guys for being here. This was episode 15, Games Over Plastic. Please clap, everybody. Let's go around and do our final thoughts. And let's go ahead and start with... Sean Mason, final thoughts for this episode, sir? 
great uh great games i'm looking forward to continuing to do i can't wait to do the 90s mm-hmm. it's gonna be fun oh yeah i can't wait till we get to the 70s pong <laughs> i know um all right, guys, my final thoughts for this episode are I just want to thank the listeners, as always, um, without you guys. Uh, we probably wouldn't still be doing this podcast if nobody was listening it. We appreciate your love, the kindness and support, your likes, your comments. Um, keep it up. We appreciate it. Give us some write ins. Um, you know, we need some more write ins. Shout out to Astro Parrot King for his. But, yeah, these are some great games. Games are awesome. And just have fun and have a great week and have a great time. Mm-hmm. That's my final thought. Hodge, sir, your final thoughts for this episode. Never trust a fart. I mean, that's good advice. That's good advice, especially with uh, Sean playing uh, South Park. Stick of truth. <laughs> Lots of fart jokes. Is that all you got, sir? Yeah, I got nothing. It was fun. I love talking about these games, especially going down memory lane of 20-year-old games almost at this point. So, yeah. Well, love over it. 20 years old. Yeah, over, yeah, from, yeah, 15 to 22 years old, 24 years old. Yeah awesome all right well guys that's going to do it for us this has been games over plastic episode number 15 be great and have a great day goodbye everyone bye bye